and welcome back to the channel where we are trying to fix a solid white color characteristic that breeds true in our guppies. In this video, I will be updating y'all on the progress of cross number 7, which has accumulated a few males with white color but overall has a small number of offspring. I'll go over the genes that I think are involved here, but we won't be getting as complicated as the previous video. However, it will rely on some familiarity with the genes that were discussed there. If you are new here, my name is Ivan. I started this channel to document the progress of breeding an initial group of five guppies that didn't share many physical characteristics. We are currently in the middle of a series of back crosses with Gandalf, who is our white male. If you haven't seen the previous videos, be sure to go back and check them out. They lay the foundation of how some of our genes are inherited and the evidence to support what genotype our guppies have. Crosses 1 and 7 will be the most relevant for this video. Cross 7 was initially introduced alongside cross 6 because their mothers are sisters from cross 1. The difference is that the mothers of cross 7 do not have the half black trait that their sisters have and therefore I chose to update y'all on their progress before cross 6. I'll be calling the mothers of cross 7 C1B and the mothers to cross 6 C1A. C1 just represents cross 1. In the last video of cross 7, we did not dive too deeply into the color genetics of the offspring because they were still too young to express much of their color. The only color genetic we could really identify was their base body color, which was split between gray based and blonde based. This was expected because their mothers are heterozygous for this trait. But I want to point out something interesting about the C1B females that still puzzles me. As mentioned in previous videos, C1B females lack any red coloration. This may not seem that strange at first, however, almost all the offspring from crosses 1 through 4 had some red, even if it was subtle. This can be explained by Gandalf's dominant magenta gene of which he is homozygous for. As a result, all his offspring have it and should express it. So far this manifested in various degrees of red coloration. The fact that C1B females lack any red expression is curious because they should be carrying the magenta gene too. It is possible they have an additional gene that I'm unaware of masking the effects of magenta and making them look yellow with shades of gray or even black. This is why I decided to split the females from cross 1 into their individual back crosses. My hope is that the offspring from cross 7 may shed some light into this mystery. Whatever is genetically happening to C1B females may or may not influence their offspring, but I am hopeful that we will find out soon. I will continue to treat this cross through the lens of the results I am seeing from cross 5. This means that there should be 8 predictable color characteristics in cross 7. I'll explain where these 8 are coming from in a bit. But because of the puzzling color combinations of our C1B females, we shouldn't be surprised if we see some guppies that don't fit these predictions. In the previous video, there were only a few males that were developed enough for me to separate. I continued to separate more males over time and we are at a total of about 12 or 15. There are still some offspring that are too young to differentiate and because of my limited tank availability, I kept them together in the same tank as their mothers and female siblings. In order to provide enough cover for the newly born fry, I allow the green algae to grow into dense mats. For the time being, my plan is to keep the mothers in this tank long enough to drop enough fry for me to see one or two males that have the all white characteristic that I'm after. I will then remove the mothers into a separate community tank and wait for the accumulated offspring to mature before tallying up all the numbers. I am confident that this brood will produce offspring that have the all white phenotype because genotypically they are like cross 5. The only difference should be the gray based body color trait thrown into the mix. I encourage you to watch part 2 of cross 5 video where I go in depth on the 3 genes that I think are involved. These are the magenta, Storzbach, and the European blau genes. In a similar way to the mothers of cross 5, the mothers of cross 7 should be heterozygous for all 3 of these genes. Ideally, we can ignore the dominant magenta gene here just like we did for cross 5 because 100% of the offspring should express it. If it turns out false, we will revisit this. 
By only considering the heterozygous Storzbach and European Blau genes of C1B females, the resultant offspring would produce four different phenotypes when backcrossed to Gandalf, who is homozygous for all of these genes. I have them represented graphically below, and these are identical to the phenotypes we saw in cross 5. However, these representations only show guppies that have a blonde based body color and isn't the whole story for our brood. Their mothers are also heterozygous for blonde based body color and therefore our brood has a 50% chance of being blonde based or gray based. Note that I am changing the notation I previously used for this trait. Instead of using the letter G, I'm switching to the letter B. Doing it this way is a little more accurate but follows similar rules. An uppercase letter B represents the dominant gray based body color allele and the lowercase letter B for the recessive blonde based body color allele. For a guppy to express the blonde based body color, it needs to inherit two recessive alleles, represented by both lowercase letter Bs. Any other combination would result in a gray based body color. Accounting for the base body color, in addition to our two other genes, results in gray based counterparts to the four blonde based body color phenotypes. Therefore, we can expect to see a total of eight phenotypes from cross seven. Without getting too bogged down in the details, each of these phenotypes are equally likely. This has to do with our females being heterozygous for each of the genes, whereas Gandalf is homozygous. This gives us a 1 in 8, or a 12.5% chance of seeing guppies expressing the all-white phenotype with a blonde based body just like Gandalf. But what's interesting is that we should also see all-white guppies that have a gray based body color. I suspect these will look closer to silver. The question is, do they still count towards reaching my first goal? Does it still work towards fixing a solid white color trait? I suppose if something is to breed true, all the offspring must be identical. In that case, these gray based guppies don't count. But I never defined if they must breed true as gray based or blonde based. If they count, it increases my odds to 25% with an all white phenotype. We will have to see how these males mature over time. So far, there is a mix of males that have developed substantial color and some that are still just starting. I believe this one is the gray based body color counterpart to the almost pink male in cross five. He has highly iridescent body color that suggests Storzbach expression and a red colored tail suggesting that he doesn't express the European blau, which we would need for an all white phenotype. Speaking of European blau, I don't know what that trait looks like on a gray based body color. Perhaps it's a lighter shade of gray. Granted, we do have some males that have tails that are more yellow, indicating they may be expressing the European blau. One thing that I found interesting is that some males have patterns on the tops and bottoms of their tails. When looking through Philip Shattuck's book, he talks about the top and bottom swords together with the Storzbach gene. He doesn't say that they are linked, but perhaps come from similar origins. Some of the brothers to the C1B females actually express this trait very strongly. They are not exactly swords, but they do have more color on the upper and lower parts of their tails. As a side note, the males you see in the background are from a semi community tank that we started from the same four original females in Gandalf. I just pull males as soon as I see them and leave all the females. This is a separate experiment that I might make a video on in the future. But the underlying all white phenotype goal is the same, just in a semi colony style of breeding. Anyway, if you are familiar with the Aquadiction YouTube channel, they also cross some of their guppies and endlers to white guppies. Like in my crosses, a lot of the resultant offspring looked magenta. But one cross gave results that are similar to the sword color patterns that I'm seeing in my own fish. It's super fascinating and I linked that video in the description. But so far, we don't have any males that are all white yet. Our numbers are still low, and I'll do a proper tally in the next update video. We are bound to have some males that are all white, and right now it's a patience game. 
At the moment, my plan is to use one of the all-white males from this cross to pair with a female from cross 5. If we choose carefully, the resultant offspring will be very close to our goal of a line that breeds true. The females in this cross have much less color than their male brothers. The gray-bodied females look like they tend to have more patterns in their tails compared to their blonde-bodied sisters. As of right now, I don't really have a breeding plan for them since I intend on using just their brothers. These will likely go to some local hobbyists in my area after I have counted and sorted all of them to give me final numbers for the genotypes in this cross. Overall, cross 7 is an interesting one because there is an air of mystery to it. We don't know why the C1B females lack any red and we have some interesting patterns showing up in the offspring. I will continue separating any males that I see until we have our males that express that all white phenotype. If this is something that you find interesting, please consider sticking around. I have several more crosses to go over and the focus for the next video will be on cross 6, the sisters to this cross. This one has much more offspring and is throwing some males that have super interesting coloration because of their mother's half black trait. But in the meantime, here are some update clips on my other crosses. Cross 8 fry showed up on March 21st. A little late, but it looks like a decent brood size. Oddly, we are still waiting on fry from cross number 9. Cross 5 are maturing nicely. Hope you all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next one.